At least they're called Hans, right? Exactly. <laughs> God, that picture creeps me out, though. All right. Hello and everybody. Hello, hello and everybody. Hello and welcome, Please everybody, man. to our Southern Cross Dota Tides Rush Season 3 Grand Final Final Match. It is a best of five series and it's gone the distance. CSW, two that games, Hans man. Reborn, two. And we are down to our final thrilling game between the two teams. Hans took out the first two games. CSW fighting back with their great turtle strategy. We'll see what happens this game. Radiant I am the Dan. Spectre. Joining me is Daredevil Dan. And how are you going? Pretty good, man. We had a great game last game. Anti-Mage uh, Anti got through it and basically won the game because the old uh, Rising stuff. Uh, same bands coming out. They just need to auto hit these bands. Like they're the same every time. <laughs> Five seconds. They just have it like memorized. They can close their eyes and click on the band and know they've done the right hero. Yeah. And the Nyx gets next. banned out again. Dyer's Storm. Band. Nature's prophet. Maybe. I mean, CSW do have first pick. I honestly think these teams need to ban out Venomancer. Or Pugna. Radiant's pick. I don't think Hans like, are going to pick it again. I mean, one of the things is you don't want to give X music a storm. You don't want to give in Endless Winter mm. Nature's Prophet or uh, can't Dyer's say which Nature's pick. Prophet. You don't want to give Rick's, Risk Nyx and you don't want to give the Weaver away. They're just getting banned out. Yeah, it's it's a lot of kind of targeted bans. We might even see a Timbersaw banned out for balls because he is just insane on that hero. And I'm sad that his Pudge lost. I'm so sad. He was doing so well and then and not. And we are going to see the Pugna Dyer's first picked pick. again. Yeah, so, yeah and Radiant's the Earthshaker. Pick. They are just going standard again, but will they try and mix it up with a carry? Or are they just going to try and push harder? Uh, I don't know, man. Like, every time... It's just split push that wins. Even with that anti mage game, it was still kind of split push. So it's a little Ten bit to dangerous. Go. But can't say whips. Got the ledge. Radiant got the clockwork. Ban. And uh, both these teams are getting the heroes they want right now. Yeah, clockwork is great for grouping up heroes to follow up with the lich ultimate. Just insane. If you can catch two heroes in a cogs, if they're you know just the creeps are going to be Ten dying in the course of a team fight, and if you can manage to completely isolate them. It's Five insane. Seconds. They can't run, they can't do anything, they just instantly die. And the Pugna Earthshaker has worked Reserve out really well time. for Hans so far. Just the, the long range initiation into the Decrep and then lift from a Rubik, it, it's just been absolutely insane. So we might see Hans pick up the Rubik, but you know, CSW still need a slick hero, so we might see him on the hard carry again. They could go the anti-mage route, or they could put him on the Queen of Pain again. So it really depends yeah it most certainly does so it can go either way but uh we're just gonna have to see i mean hans reborn have been stronger in the first two games and they looked stronger in the third game as well but the fact that csw that had the anti mage and they had the comeback mechanism uh just worked out really well for them yeah i think in the previous game csw were defending okay but they had no way of forcing Hans out. They didn't have a split pushing Nature's Prophet. They didn't have Ten a split pushing Anti Mage. It was just them defending and living while Hans continued Five to farm seconds. the rest of the map. So they eventually lost. They only had, you know, the Queen of Pain or the Lycan, which they didn't use to split push, Radiant which I think is a big band. mistake. But, you know, last game, they got the Anti Mage. They turtled and split pushed, so they forced TPs back. Uh, Hans Reborn missing out on that melee racks was a really big turning point it only had 150 health left Ten seconds to go and you know i think if they got that they would have stood a lot Five better seconds. chance in the game but still i think csw would have taken it out by that point reserve you know they just got a four man wipe and it just happened again and again when they tried to push uphill so it was just some great that play from bad. csw hitting their timing window and getting enough farm onto onto slicks yeah, exactly, and uh, I mean, these bands coming out, uh, we can't really talk too much about the bands for these two teams, because everybody kind of knows them, 
it's almost always the same. You know, the first four bands from Hans Reborn have pretty much been the same the whole time. Radiant's no one picking pick. up that Naix really early, so we're not going to see him at all this uh, best of five. And when we're on a Chen band out by uh, Can't Say Whips, and the Chen obviously uh, is a big factor in a lot of games from any team. So you got to get that one out. Uh, they don't want to end this winter on the win runner again. He did play fantastically in that, and maybe that's kind of a giveaway to say we're going to pick another melee hard carry. And we don't want to offline to beat him. It, it is possible. I Five mean, seconds. it's really dangerous picking up a melee carry with a clockwork on your team. Reserve time. It can really stuff up your team fight if you do that. I mean, of course, you can always blink into the cogs, but then you're not getting out of them. And if it's not anti mage, then it can really screw you up. Especially if it's also not Nakes, who can just jump in with the clockwork. And of course, Nakes being banned out, it's a bit hard to do that. So CSW thinking hard, they're taking their time, which is something that both of these teams don't generally do, and we're going to see a Death Prophet Dyer's picked pick. up by CSW. Yeah, so going into... I mean, Death Prophet fills that role of doing a lot of physical damage with their ulti, taking down towers very, very powerfully, but you look at the rest of their team, Clockwork Glitch, it's more of a team fight Death Prophet than a pushing Death Prophet. Uh, I mean, as soon as the mid hero from Hans Reborn. Same as kind of when you got a Pugna, they leave to go gank, you take their tower. Ten they can, they to can do the same thing. Yeah, they definitely Five can. It, it's the same as if you're against the DK. As soon as you rotate out, your mid tower is basically forfeit. You don't Reserve You time. don't really want Death Prophet in an early fight. You want a lot of farm on her early, and she's not really good in team fights, kind of pre-even level 7 or so, because... You need levels of crypt swarm up. You need the exorcism up, so you you do a lot. You, know, you have a lot more spirits. You need your ult up, and you need some silence. So you're looking at like level eight, nine is when Death Prophet gets really strong. Level eleven, of course, that next level of ulti just puts you through the roof. So I think it's going to be difficult for some of these heroes to run around in the fight. I mean. Pugna really relies on getting those blasts off, and he's going to have to run into spirits every time he wants to do it. And odds are going to go back pick. and pick up the Alchemist. So... Yeah, and so they're going into the uh, picking up a carry, but this could also be their mid uh, against the Death Prophet. Alchemist, uh, obviously, as we saw the other game against uh, the Queen of Pain, the Acid Spray did a lot of work and uh, even managed to pick him up a kill combined with the stun. And Death Prophet not the strongest hero, but Kanka being picked up by Can't Say Whips now. And this is one of their signature heroes as well that we haven't seen in a while. Yeah, Slick's playing up on that Kanka. He used to have so much fun with it. So I'm surprised we haven't seen it much more often, but maybe that's why they've been putting him on Queen of Pain so Damn much that people forget go. about the Kanka and don't ban him out. So he used to be pretty much first, second ban status against CSW, so with the Clockwork Cogs, with X Marks, with Reserve the slow time. coming out from Lich and the physical damage from Death Prophet, Alchemist needs a BKB, but then the BKB is not going to do anything against the Death Prophet, and Kunker's going to be hitting you for a crap ton of damage, so, you know, right now CSW looking very good, the splash damage also just completely ripping apart heroes like Pugna, Earthshaker, and Venomancer. If you can get some good farm on Kunker, I think that's pretty much game one for me. Radiance here. ban. Yeah, and I think CSW really need to ban out Darkseer. Like, this ban. You get Darkseer and Alchemist, and you're farming the Alchemist, which they very well could do, and chuck the uh, Venomancer mid, because Shaitan does play that. Uh, they Ten could definitely do that. And Darkseer Alchemist are one of those commas where you vacuum and get a five man stun five and you win. Seconds. Like, there's nothing you can do about that. If you're all stunned, he picks up a bash, uh, Battle Fury. Uh, and Reserve some attack time. speed. It's just so much damage to fly, so they could pick that out. Uh, it obviously, can't say whips can't really pick it because he doesn't fit into dual lanes. You could have him jungle, but then you'd have quite weak lanes, so a well, little bit risky. I don't know about that. He definitely fits in dual lanes with a clockwork. That's true. Yeah, with a clockwork, he does the 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 double melee lane. Even though it's double melee, it does output a lot of damage. And if you catch them in cogs with an iron shell, it's just crazy scary but the et being banned out against hands reborn so the option for darkseer is still there uh they still have a lot of things they can pick up they can pick up a solo laner and go aggressive with pugna shaker veno 
and they're going to pick up a Luna. Uh, so Rain the farming Luna pick. this game. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think Darkseer is really the best pick there, just because the ultimate... Like, it's great for the vacuum, because you can vacuum over Fisher, you can vacuum into an AoE stun, you can vacuum into a lot of things, but their heroes are crap for the ultimate. Death Prophet and Kunker Clockwork and Lich are some of the most useless heroes for a Darkseer ultimate. You're not going to do anything with them, so... Ten seconds to go. I think maybe if they were against the Alchemist, they could definitely pick up a Darkseer, but Five they, they do go, go for the Luna, and... It kind of leads you to believe that they're going to go... Reserve full time. Lanes. Oh, I mean, they. I guess they could go aggressive with the Pugna ES Veno, and then go Alchemist mid, Luna safe, but you would really want the Ten farm of the Luna go. really protected, so Reserve are we going to see... Shadow Friend. Dyer's pick. And we're going to see That's Slicks on the see. Shadow Fiend. This is like... Normal Dota now. We have like two cores, sometimes this three cores weird. on each team, and this is we're gonna see balls on the Luna as well. So it's a carry, carry Luna, and endless winter on the Alchemist. So normally playing the off lane, so it's gonna be interesting to see what he does. Yeah, definitely trying to make us think here. Shatan does have the Pugna, so it looks like Everybody a mid Pugna set. with a farming Luna, and then you've got endless. It's probably gonna be like. <laughs> oh, Shatan. It's probably going to be uh, like an Alchemist Veno lane plus Balls and Firestarter. Maybe even uh -huh. just roaming. It's going for a level 1 Roshan here. They most certainly are. Did it just get pink? No. That, was that Lich ping it out? I think that but was. How do they tank this? They've got to split it really well and Endless, don't get stunned, They've... don't get stunned, he got oh, stunned! Oh, he got stunned! No! Oh. 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 oh, Korean oh. casting, oh. Oh. oh! He was down to like 15 health, but they're basically Last balancing starter. it by having flasks on the Earthshaker and on Endless. Khan and just Endless. swapping it. He's got to be really oh, careful, now Balls is taking it, but it looks like they're going to take it and CSW have no, have no idea what's going on. Luna. Luna! And this is going to be an instant level 2 for all of their team, and that, that's just a really good start for Hans. No Roshan way! They did it! And you get, a, you get an killed. item for the early Roshan kill. Slim Guani? <laughs> <laughs> just, that's, they're all level 2 and Holy a half from God. that. And that's not like a Rosh team, right? You don't expect that. Haste! Some, just so, some great tactics coming out from Hans there. So next level. But uh, shout out to uh, Woodsy, by the way, one of the JD admins. Totally sent me money for pizza. Ah, oh, what a bro. What a bro. So pizza after the cast. I gotta wait like months for mine until Ben can come down to Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, the BM? The, the, the BM. Okay. Be nice, guys. Be nice. It's okay. But, uh, I mean, aggressive tri lane from Hans Reborn here with an Earthshaker, Venno, Luna. There's a lot of damage to come out on this lane, and they're all level two and a half. So they've definitely got the advantage there. Yeah, it's a great start to an aggressive tri lane because usually the biggest problem you have is getting level two on your supports and getting experience for them. So when they start off with experience, it's probably one of the best things in the world. Yeah, it most certainly is, and I'm not really sure they needed to go aggressive with this. I think they could have just safely farmed the Luna, but uh, they're going to be farming the Pugna, and they're going to have Endless Winter on the Mid-Alchemist, and I've seen them actually play this Mid-Alchemist in some IXDL games, so maybe something he's been practicing over there that people haven't really been seeing, been sneaky practicing. But I mean, he's against a, a dual lane of Slicks and Muffin Man, so he eventually won't be doing that well here, but he will be getting the levels. And Lippy just missing that slow poison on the Death Prophet there, so he's going to get away just out of range. Very unlucky there. Earthshaker also doing some pulls here. So coming into the engines, these creeps have such a weird aggro. The, you can see he goes back. Oh, it's blocked. Oh, okay, I'll come back. And then uh, we are going to see an instant smoke up. So Firestarter and Lippy going for a kill here. They're being very aggressive early on. Guani in a lot of trouble here. 
They have to wait for the cooldowns. He's going to come and pop out. They know exactly which one he is. Gets blocked off. Gets slowed down. This should be our first blood here. Torrent gets thrown Torrent. out. Will hit on ES, but doesn't hit on Lippy. That's our first blood going to the Venomancer. I was so ready for him to deny himself with his illusions. It was going to be epic, but not quite. Oh, Endless Winter in a lot of trouble. Double raises. Slicks picking up the kill. An excellent little frost from Lich there. The Dire Great best do work. something about that bottom tower. Yeah, really nicely done there, and getting that kill, it is one for one now, because the Alchemist did die in mid, as you saw. And Shadowfiend, decent start now. He missed out on a few levels because Lich was there to start with, but Lich is level three and a half. And Endless is only level four, and Shadowfiend is out-leveling him. So, giving him that extra boost in the mid lane really did help him there. So, fantastically done. Yeah, he would have basically had nothing, which is really scary. And one thing I'd like to point out is this is a support conquer. It's the support conquer. It's happening. It's actually happening in a game, Dan. This is something that me and Dan jokingly ran in a pub because he got Meepo and wanted to farm, and I was playing conquer. And we've done it probably twice more in games, and we've won every time. So, support conquer becoming legit. Alright, <laughs> okay then. Apparently Slim Guani is a uh, Kefini. <laughs> <laughs> so, nice, nice for him, apparently he wins a lot. There you go. Balls, farming decently, sitting at uh, 18 and 4. Shadow Friend is our number one farmer in that mid lane, also has a kill to his name, so... Slick's definitely very happy, and Nevermore... This is the kind of hero I like to see for Slicks. He's so aggressive, but you can see that acid spray starting to really hurt him. Luckily, he does have that bottle, but definitely needing to bottle crow. And this regen rune should be picked up by Firestarter here. At least it won't be going to the Shadow Fiend, so definitely needs to bottle crow ASAP. Yeah, Firestarter securing that for him, so couldn't really get in there. And I mean, Shadow Fiend, he's doing fine in the like. He's out CSing by a crap load. He's out. Uh, leveling and he's just doing really well. I think a lot of it is to do with the Lich. Obviously with this acid spray being level 3 now, it's gonna push him Ooh, out. Carry in a lot of trouble here. Gets Lucent Beamed as well as getting poisoned up. Firestarter not even using the stun and that's an easy kill there. The dire try lane. But it looks like they want to go in on Endless Winter here. In comes Muffin Man, an excellent torrent catching Endless Winter there. One Ready raise, the two raise, three raise, gone. Slicks hitting 100%. Yeah, really nicely Trouble done there. And CSW, I mean, Hans got that Roshan, which was insane and almost, you know, failed miserably with that stun. Like, it was so close, man. But the, uh... CSW looking pretty strong here. They're out CSing mid really well. The Luna is getting now. decent farm, uh, but and the Pugna, but the Clockwork's still days. sitting up at 21, so it's all looking quite even, except the fact that they got that Roshan, so they're still at a pretty decent advantage on Hans Reborn. They're 1500 ahead, and it's been like that the whole game. A stun coming out of Kyrie, as well as the Lucent Beam. Can he get in range? He doesn't have enough mana for it, but out come the Ward Slow. The right clicks from and... Ward's doing so much. A two-man torrent coming out, though. And that's going to be the end of that. Will he come in for enough range? One shot, but the Tango's going to save him for now. Throwing out the Crypt Swarm, just going to be out of range. But Death Prophet gets out of there alive. Yeah, really nicely done. And, I mean, that torrent just saved it so bad. They still got the tower, though. So, I mean, even if they were just forcing her out, not even going for a kill, everything went fine for them. The mana boots are now up on Lippy, so Firestarter is going to have a lot more mana to his name. Obviously, a shaker being one of the biggest problems on him is that he has no mana. Exactly, it's going to be very difficult. And now Slick's taking out a big stack camp. This is what you need to do if you're a support for a Shadow Fiend. If, as soon as he gets up those max raises, he can just take these out so well. And Radiant he just got tower. Could use five, six hundred. Oh, he just got 550 gold just from that one stack and about a half a level. There he goes. Yeah, and that's one of the things, you know, the flash farm on the sky is insane, so. Yeah, at the moment, though, he is sitting at the top. Uh, almost basically tied with balls right now. Pugna is next, followed by Clockwork, but then the rest of Hans Reborn, the early Roshan really helping them out, as well as a tower being taken for them, 
If you look at the experience, Hans still ahead by a thousand, starting to come back in favor of CSW, and Gold sitting around 3k, so uh, they're doing a good job of securing the early game, but right now, Slick's sitting really pretty for this early game, and a Shadow Fiend that gets on a roll is one of the hardest things to stop. He just hits you for so much damage, he can basically two-shot your supports, and then just go on to throw out a BKB ultimate and take the rest of the team, so... Hans really need to be careful with their timing, uh, just with last game. They have to be very aware of where that Shadow Fiend is. We're going to see an Ethereal coming out. Godot in a lot of trouble, trying to TP out. He knows the stun's already there, and Firestarter getting knocked back by the Cogs. Great awareness there from the Clockwork. We see Godot getting away unscathed after three heroes rotate top. Now Balls here, going for the Lucent Beam, just forcing Guani back. Radiant's and they're going to try and take this tower with the Lunar Aura. Yeah, definitely. And now the push is coming Radiant's in from Hans on this top lane. Easily going to take out this tower. I mean, with Venno Wards and Shatav on that partner, One stands no chance. Plus the Lunar, uh, giving 22 damage extra to everyone. It's it's oh, yeah. it's very good for farming. Uh, sorry, not for farming, for pushing. But also good for farming. <laughs> Clockwork does have his level 7. So when they're doing these tower trades, well, not trades, but when they're taking out these towers, they need to be very careful. As we saw in the last game, or not the last game, but the game before, Luna is very, very susceptible to clockwork. If you get a hook off on a Luna and she's the only target in the cogs, she's not doing anything. The cast time on her spells are just ridiculous and you can't move. So, you know, they need to be careful not to have that Luna in, like, right in the front line. It's a bit hard to do with her attack range. So they definitely need to be very mindful of that clockwork. Yeah, they really do. And... You know, when you've got someone like Godot on the clockwork, not really something I've seen him play many times, but Godot being the person he is, I'm sure he can land hooks. I don't think he's going to struggle with it. And this nether ward being placed in vision, they are going to hit it out. But they were just using it as a kills. bait. Instantly coming in with a double hook. These razors from Slick's doing so much. Needs to get one more, but just hits one giant right click. Balls on a double kill, getting that lucid beam off, and that ward... Just the perfect bait. They just blow up Lich instantly. But Slick's managing to hit back, getting you know, two kills. Yeah, it was uh, two for two. Lich did buy back, though, which does hurt them a bit. But Hans not being able to push into the tower, which is what they want to do. And I think they could actually just have balls farming. You know, keep someone with him, farm him up. They certainly don't have a weak late game with an Alchemist and a Luna, but then you look at SF, who's had a fantastic start. He's not even that far away from BKB. He needs another 1,600 gold, and he's got it. Kunker, he's a support Kunker. He's level 5. His life is sad. But he does have the swag two pipes. He has two pipes, people. He gets one as a pipe, and he gets one with the mustache. And one's even a tournament one from Tide's Wrath. With Megalomania scoring, uh, of Azir scoring a double kill against Young Money Club. Pipe swag. Gotta have Pipe it. swag. He's so... And Hans so boss. gonna be taking down Roshan again. We are gonna see Spotted. a clockwork rocket coming out though, and the whole of CSW are here. This could go disastrously. They do have the Lich ultimate available. They don't have Kunker at level 6 though. There's gonna be no boat. We're gonna hear a hook, but he doesn't latch it, and that might actually be the cause Roche's for concern. Done. Luna picking up the Aegis instantly. Yeah. Out comes the Eclipse. Godot in a lot of trouble will get hit by the stun, but a big yeah. torrent That's slicks. Affordable. Grabbing one kill would have got two if not for that uh, stun from Firestarter, and you know, Shatan grabbing a double kill, and uh, a kill going towards Slicks, but they do manage to get the Roshan. The Aegis is still up on balls, so a great pickup for Hans Dyer's there. top tower's getting beat down. Yeah, I mean, a definite win for Hans there, picking up the Roshan and two kills. Uh, they did the get a return kill uh, on tower. Slicks on that Shadow Fiend. Who is getting Dyer's closer structure and closer structure right to the BKB, and basically Radiant's he won't be afraid to, uh, to fight. Up. Look, he'll just get in there, man up, kill you know everyone. Exactly. Radiant's you can see the power of Hans up. right now. That Alchemist with just one level of ultimate can just take all of the shots of a tower while they attack with Pugna. It's it's absolutely ridiculous, and it seems to be playing out like previous games where Hans have all of their towers. All the T1s are down for CSW, but maybe they try and bring it back with a smoke gank here. Endless needs to be very careful. The Invis pickup 
He gets it, he bottles it, he uses it, but he's caught in here. The AoE damage should be enough. Kirei needs to get the swarm of his life. Endless runs down, calling it out, so he will just live. Or will a rocket come out to the left? No? It's also only level 2, so I don't think it has a killing. Yeah, just off. Uh, and just now, got away. now watch the regen. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be on full health really quickly. I mean, that's the nice upgrade to his ulti, right? It doesn't give him the health, but Radiant it certainly keeps you alive. Hits. I think that's the big thing about Alchemist. In my mind, he's no longer a carry. He's a utility. You should be getting up yeah. things like Phase Boots, Radiant maybe Shadow Blade for a Genko, and not go into carry items. Maybe even get like a Medallion or an Emek. There, there are a lot of different builds that you can go on in Alchemist nowadays. Towers but you can also hits. turn around and go back into carry late game because of Greville's Greed. It gives you the opportunity to play utility, as you said, with a mid hero. Radiant but you can also change. If it goes late. Well, we are going to see a vote come through. Shatan in a lot of trouble getting hit down, but the mech Here's just comes out. Endless Winter now coming tower. forward with a stun, but he can't grab anyone. And is the thing is, you can, the you can also be played as a support. So. There are so many things you can do with him. In. Yeah, you really can, and Shadow Fiend now with the BKB. And look at his CS, he's 113, and the next closest is 61. This guy's like, alright, I just played Anti-Mage, let me hit some creeps some more. I'm in the mood to bop creeps, and that's what he's doing. He's doing the bopping. And Luna has picked up a Yasha, is going back for the BKB now. We'll have it completed up in, you know, quite a while. Still has to get the Mythal Hammer as well as the recipe, so it won't be coming anytime soon. And during that time, raises are really going to hurt. The only problem as well for Luna is even with the BKB, Shadow Fiend just hits for an absurd amount of damage. He hits right now for 183 damage. Like, that is so much to be hit by as a Luna, especially with the negative armor aura that Shadow Fiend has. She only has 930 health right now. It's like four hit. Guess what's happening to die. Pretty much, and tower. you chuck a couple raises in there as well. It's just gonna destroy. Well, we're die gonna see an X marks go dot hitting on endless winter, but instantly getting poisoned up. The boat comes through, hitting on two. The lich ulti bouncing through. Endless ram back into the team, getting more and more bounces. Terrible Look at the fight damage. Here. Balls Somebody's going down out. after the respawn. Slicks getting a nice ultimate you there, but endless winter. Speed. Bringing the Lich ulti back into his Dyer's team. Bottom towers getting the what business. a blunder. And they were really, really careful about those Lich ultis every other game, you know. Each of these teams Dyer's knowing how to split, but the just didn't happen that time. And that ulti from Shadow Fiend, man, that respawn, you were just like, oh no. Oh no. I'm going to die, guys. Please help. And he had no chance of getting out of that. Slicks just knowing the respawn time and... They destroyed that fight. It looked like they were going to do even better, but it was still a decent trade. And, I mean, they kept the tower alive, which is a big point for them as well. Yeah, so, CSW, are. never giving up. I think the point is that Hans were actually going to do very well. I mean, they had uh, Luna that went down from the Lich Shulti, but she had Aegis. Alchemist went down, but he had already thrown out the stun, had already thrown Acid Spray, so he wasn't going to do much more apart from right-click a little bit, and you know, he doesn't have any damage, he doesn't have the armlet yet, and he got the defensive components of it first, so bringing that Lich Ultimate back meant they all had to back. Luna was then completely dead to rights, and the they couldn't re-engage. Like, I, I honestly tower. thought Hans could have come back in because all of the ultimates were expended. Godot didn't have Hook, he didn't have Cogs, the Shadow Fiend ultimate would have been used on Lunar Respawn regardless, but they could have followed up with something. In fact, right now, Godot coming in behind, getting an Ice Hook on Lippy, but he's getting exploded right now, and Shatan just tanking through the spirit damage and going for the hooks, but in comes the X Marks Torrent Boat, smashing him down, Blani getting a nice kill there, Endless trying to do what he can, but he really shouldn't run into this. Slicks can just turn and take him down so easily. And CSW looking like they're going to take a tower Radiant from that last team fight. They're in such a right better now. position. Dyer's Endless Winter running tower. around here, but the you damage from Slicks just way too much. And he's coming in too close here. We've got Guani in the side. Radiant Can't throw out a turret. In comes the X and turret. He's going to be very much in trouble. Slicks going down really quickly, though. An excellent Blink ulti. Firestarter having that Blink so quickly on a Earthshaker. They just didn't expect it. Guani, however, did TP out, so they... Searches in the bushes will be fruitless. 
I mean, the fact that Endless Winter was so close and playing so ballsy, they should have known something was coming. I think that was just a bit of an overextension from Slicks there. He was like, well, we're ahead. I want this tower. We're going to kill it. And they should have known something bad was happening. They should definitely have been a bit more aware. And that has Alchemist's armlet. If we're looking at the net worth, it is Shadow Fiend by about 1.3k. And then it's four heroes from Hans Reborn. They're, they're doing really well on the gold chart. If we look at the experience, it's almost at zero. CSW had it at around 2.5k at one stage. It's dipped right back down with the last couple of fights. If we look at the gold, it's in Hans's favor by about 5.2k gold. And that's really uh, leading to the fact that they have so many towers, however. They do have all the T1s, um, plus a T2 at top. So Hans definitely ahead in terms of towers. So, you know, CSW can easily close that gap by taking a few towers after team fights, but... Uh, Kind of see how that turns out. Shadow Fiend has gone for a helm with the Dominator, so definitely going for a battle build. Do you think he finishes off the Satanic instantly so he has the BKB Satanic, or does he go into another damage item, maybe pick up the uh, Manta style? I honestly think he could pick up Crit. Yeah, or I was going to say Crit or MKB, because yeah, Luna I think might the crit be building. Against... Yeah, I think the crit against Luna is just going to absolutely destroy her. Once she's got the BKB, obviously none of the magic damage is going to help. Uh, and the pipes being built by the Venomancer. So you pick up a crit on Slicks. Once you've hit, got a Daedalus, uh, you two hit her. If you hit one crit, you two hit her. So it's going to be very helpful. Something even like a Butterfly could be good on Slicks here because of the Luna uh, late game. But... I don't think they have to worry about the Luna's damage for another 20, 30 minutes even. She doesn't even have the BKB up yet. So she's not going to be hitting that hard. Uh, the Satanic, I'm not a huge fan of for the damage item. You get the BKB to survive, you get the Helmet Dominator to farm easier and stack neutrals, uh, and then you get a damage item. Oh, and that Rocket Flare coming up, perfect timing to see Roshan respawn. So they know it's up. They know there was a Venomance award in there too, so they know Hans knows. So everyone knows what the other team knows, but what will the happen? I, want mine, the I think tower. honestly, CSW are going to take this tier 1 instead. Take the tier 1, They only need go to, to attack mid. it twice. I, I don't think it's... like, they can just do it. They're they just, not, yeah. They're not even going to take the tier 1. They're going to let the creeps kill it, which uh, they will. So, TPing down, they're going to TP bottom. They could smoke Dyer's up, but I think with the boat torrent initiation... They can definitely win this. Oh, they're but look faking at out the Roshan, right? and they're going straight for the heroes. Firestarter going forward. They're trying to take they down Muffin Man. If they can do anything, but the Cog's too strong. An excellent boat coming through. Shatan already down. Wolves coming in with the BKB and Eclipse. One down already. Lich is down, is down without using the ultimate, but difficult. in comes Slicks. Right clicking so hard. Both BKBs for the carries down, and they are going to live for now. Both teams that just clashing down. against each other so hard. And those cogs from Godot just saved his entire team there. Yeah, without those cogs, Hans Reborn probably would have killed all of them. Or more. But uh, that Poison Nova as well from Lippy forcing out most of the team. And now they can't fight the Rosh Pit. And it's they a have DD to get on here. Luna as well. But They're going to clear this too fast. And because of the poison over that Lippy threw out, it means that they have to retreat all the way back to base Roshan, to be able to come out. And that's the third Roshan at 20 minutes. So that's cheese on the Alchemist. Yeah, now this is getting a little bit more dangerous for CSW. They need to... I mean, every game we see, they keep not having the map control. And Hans Reborn really, really abusing that. And right now, it looks like they're grouping up to fight. Luna's BKB will be off cooldown in five seconds. They can see Slick starting to take the Ancients with the uh, ward that they have. He needs to be very, very careful here. He doesn't have anything like the Shadow Blade. He did go for the crit, so there's no more tank coming in. We're going to see a torrent hit on Endless. The ward placed down by Shatan, <laughs> kind of on this side of the trees, not quite in the midst of it. Radiant's but they should be able to take down this T2 tower really easily. Slick's choosing to go to top lane, Radiant's but not really achieving too much. Yeah, and I mean, Hans Reborn's teamfight is getting stronger and stronger as we go along. Where the CSW's are sort of sitting a bit stagnant, they need more damage. And as I said earlier, Slick's getting the Daedalus. So, you know, we're on the same page. <laughs> that means I'm basically as good as him, right? Oh yeah, of course. That's how it works. Yeah. Shatan has the mech, of course.
going for a Necro 2, does have it now if he wants to buy it. Lippy does have the pipe very, very soon, only around 300 gold off it, so he's, you know, the team fight of Hans is starting to come together a bit more. They're getting the items that they need to get, and the Necro is going to help them just push so much, so it's really dangerous. The next Roshan, again, is going to have Aegis and Cheese. If they don't use the Cheese on Alchemist, you can, of course, stack the Cheeses up. Which can be completely devastating in a team fight. So, you know, next fight we may be seeing an Aegis double cheese Hans team. And if we look at the experience, it is now in Hans's favor. It's only 750, but it's the first time in, you know, five minutes or more that it has been kind of in their favor. There was a big period of time from pretty much the seven minute mark that CSW were ahead. If we look at the gold, it is now six and a half K gold. In the favor of Hans, so they're definitely starting to take a lead of this game. Yeah, they really are. I mean, the kills are dead even, but they've got three Roshes on the side of Hans, and they've got the map control and the towers. Slex just killed a massive stack of neutrals, though, uh, the Ancient Camp, so he's going to have his Daedalus and 80 gold. And is that what they need to kill? Luna? She is not a tanky hero. She's going to have a Manta pretty soon, holding onto the ultimate orb, and has the Yasha. And with the ES on their side, they don't have to be uh, that afraid of the dunks. But uh, Shadowfiend, with his AoE on the uh, Razors, can just kill off those illusions quite quickly. Um, plus, obviously, Lich Ulti can bounce to them, blah, blah, blah. They've got a lot of stuff to kill lots of things in good AoE. But Venom with the pipe now. It's going to change the, how much that AoE does. Obviously, Kid A, with his ulti being physical help. damage, he's not going to care. And the they're rushing up mid lane. They're taking the tier tower. 1. Hunter Reborn is still trying to get to this tier 2. And they can clear these towers off very tower. quickly. Won't Slick's doing longer. huge amounts of damage Trouble now. Kid A hasn't even popped his tower. ulti. They don't want to use it yet. They want to save it for a fight. Or Raid for even a tier 3. Guani now going to TP back. They're afraid Dyer's of the fact that Hans Reborn can go high ground, which is fair Dyer enough. And they're going to use the glyph to delay it out even more. But they do grab the tier 1, tower. and they're going to get this tier 2. Slick's like also grabbing the tier 2. He was left Dyer's behind, but taking a lot of damage. If Hans initiate now, Slick's is going to be in a bit of trouble. I mean, he hasn't fully regen. He is walking out now, but not at max can be the difference between a one team fight or not. Oh. We're going to have a boat coming in. It's going to hit on Shatan. But they're not going to go in on it. They know it's too dangerous. A stun's going to get thrown out. It does hit on Kerry. He's down at half health. And this tier 3, down to a third health. Power of Necros, man. Dyer's and the Pugna. But right now, there are creeps knocking on Hans's door. They need to send someone back to try and take care of it. Or they can just rely on the tower. We're going to see an excellent hook in from Godot. Catching out Firestarter. He can't do anything. Gets killed off before he can use anything. Endless Winter now at half health. Using the cheese to stay alive, Luna's Aegis gets popped with one right click from Shadow Fiend. Winding up the ultimate, it goes off a second oh, too early. BKB yeah. used, Slicks going down so quickly, the Eclipse doing too much. Slicks has to buy back instantly, he does, but the tower should be going down here. But Endless Winter suicides his. He turned off the armlet and let the stun kill him. I actually have to say that was an excellent move though. Kanka had X Torrent, there was no way he was getting out of there. And he chose the suicide over giving them experience. But what a team fight. The tier 3 tower still standing at 150 health, but Slicks dying and buying back there has cost their team massively. He now only has 700 gold when he didn't have a lot more before. And the enemy carry didn't die. He went down with Aegis, but he didn't die again. And that's that's a lot of gold that you can keep up. Yeah, it really is. And hold on, I'm just getting BM'd in the chat by uh, Blake and Logical, so I'm just going to time them both out. Of course. Ha. We do have <laughs> Death Prophet. She does have the Bloodstone. 11 charges. Kiri has been quite good at saving herself or himself and being in the, the back of these fights. Uh, but the problem is, if Death Prophet isn't there, the Bloodstone's also good because if you die, it gives your team a heal. So, sometimes it is better to die. We do see him up with 2.2k gold as well with a casual cloak right now. Could turn it into a pipe. Uh, could also buy something like the Blade Mail, so the Luna is going to be damaging herself when the BKB's down. 
There are a lot of options that a Death Prophet can go. You can even go the Yules to save yourself and let your ult hit for free for a couple of seconds. Um, or even go for something more tanky like a Shivers Guard. Even go straight for the heart just so you have just the giant HP pool. Yeah, and it's really hard to kill him when he's that tanky. Alchemist now getting his BKB sent out to him, so he's going to be a little bit harder. I think a lot of it's the fact that they kite slicks once he's got his BKB up, and he only manages to clear the supports. And then, all of a sudden, when it's down, he just gets destroyed. So he needs to be very careful about when to activate the BKB. He It is sitting on 7 seconds, and look at the positioning of Hans. They're trying to find them, but they're all top. So they're going to get this tower unless we see a lot of TPs back. And uh, the glyph is down, so CSW just playing the map really well this game. Yeah, and this is what they needed the to do in the Lycan game. Mine. They should have had Lycan out, even some of the extra team members out pushing away, because they had three Necro books and Howl. There was no the way that Hans were going to outpush them. Um, and they really lost uh, kind of go there, but they do take the T2. But Hans aren't stopping. They know that they can take high ground and Arax before CSW can do anything. So yeah, the whole of CSW you have to TP back. But that... Which is, I think, the correct decision. They can still win team fights if they do them perfectly, but the uh, pipe's going to go off and the Necro 3's and here it comes. They're just going to rush high ground right now. Guani throwing yeah, out the X marks. He's going to hit on Shatan. You know throwing out the boat as well as the really Tyrant. It's going to hit perfectly. Shatan down at half health. Godot jumping in the Lich. Ulti flying through. Eclipse already killing off Death Prophet. We have Slicks hitting through. Trying to kill off Endless Winter, but just can't. Ball still at full health. Slicks now running for his life. Firestarter getting off an excellent Fisher, but an even better Torrent coming out there. Three man Torrent. The Conker goes down. Lindy is just coming through here. And Slicks goes down to Balls. They're trying to just take down this Rax and they need to do it quickly. Slicks has a massive respawn timer because of the past buyback. Lippy in a bit of trouble gets torrented up, but a nice Fisher comes out. Traps too. This Rax is regening health right now because they don't have any creeps in the base. Now they do. It's starting to tick down. Radiant's they managed to take racks, up one Rax, and the hammered. mid is prepped as well. They have a minute before Slicks is back, and they really Radiant's need to go on this. Racks. Endless Winter dropping quite low, but his Radiant's ultimate will just heal him up straight up. away, and Hans will just TP back. So they're not going to try and force down the mid tower. I think they could have damaged it quite a bit, to be honest, because they have no Lich ulti. There's no DP ulti. It's just a hook and a boat right now, but... They're going to play it safe. safe. They, yeah. they got a Rax. They're in the leading position. So there's no reason to possibly throw away that lead. But just an excellent fight coming out from both sides there. And Hans just getting the advantage. So yeah. a Rax does go down in that bottom lane. If we look at the experience graph... It's now around 7,000 in Hans's favor. If you look at the gold, sitting at basically 8k gold. So they're starting to stretch their lead now. They had a small lead. It's starting to get bigger. And this Roshan should be up in the next 43 seconds. The timer. Yeah, and are they going to just take... Up. Are they just going to take the fourth Roshan? I mean, it's giving them such an advantage that Cheese did save the Alchemist once. The Aegis obviously didn't do... Uh, a great deal the first time on the Luna, but the second time it did a lot. It kept him alive. And he, uh, the Slicks just mistimed the Requiem of Souls to kill him the second time, but I mean, you had to be completely perfect with it because Luna had a BKB. He was just slightly too early, and um, the fight probably would have been a lot different if he managed to get the damage out, but with the BKB, it was just so hard to do. Yeah, there's like a and 0.2 now, second window, so you definitely can't yeah. fault Slicks for oh, that. Yeah. No, it's, it was just the timing. It was really hard. And now, they're going to go to Roshan. They, CSW know it's up. They are smoked up, and they're going to go. And this fight is probably going to determine who wins this game. And CSW right now, they have the boat. They have Slicks Play as here. ulti. They have the Lich ulti, so it's getting so much more dangerous for Hans to be in that Roshan pit. But with a Clockwork, you can just constantly check it. And that's one of the best things about Clockwork. He's really resurged as an offlaner. Look at this Clash and didn't see him for a long time, but now they're instantly going to come up. The Necro 3s get popped. Everyone popping BKBs. Slicks dropping low. The boat coming through. 
The uh, spirits Jeez. coming out from Kiri doing so much damage. Han's already dropping one. An excellent Nova coming out there. Slick's hit without the BKB. He drops almost instantly. A triple kill, though, because of the ultimate coming out. Ball's still alive, though. A double kill for him gets X backed. It's a double kill for Shatan. And a lot of kills there for Balls as well. They all go down apart from Lich who managed to TP out. And it's just complete mayhem and murder. We do have a Morbid Mask on Balls, so he should be able to take this down as long as Roshan doesn't stun him up too much. But they need Shatan to come through as well. The mech comes back online in about 6 seconds, so should be able to heal up and do quite a bit of damage here. And I think this Roshan is definitely Hans's. Yeah, man, that was really close. Huge fight for both, and CSW almost taking that. And, uh, yeah, the butterfly now picked up on Luna, so Slicks is going to feel a lot less powerful. The right clicks were the only thing keeping this Luna down. And, you know, Slicks picked up a Yasha a little bit uh, ago, and instead of going towards the Monkey King bar, and I think he should have foresaw that the Luna was going this, as we said earlier. You know, he didn't need to pick it up as his first, uh, the Daedalus obviously doing a lot of damage. Uh, but a Monkey King Bar definitely should have been his next bet. Or even a Butterfly to sort of neutralize both. Yeah, especially but, um, with the, uh, the Glaives coming out from Luna with a Manta style of her own, it would just completely shred Slix's loot instantly. So, a bit of an odd item choice. I think Manta is still a great item on... Shadow Fiend, but possibly not the right item for this situation. Yeah, agreed. And now Hans are just going to push their advantage. They've got the Aegis, they've got the Cheese, once again, and both on the same heroes, and they're just going to try and end this game. And one more team fight loss for CSW is going to be the end of this. Yeah, right now, if we look at the scores, the experience graph now 12k in favor of Hans after that last fight, and the gold around 13, so... Hans extending their lead even further. It is currently the grand final of Southern Cross Dota's Tides Wrath Season 3. It's a best of five and both teams have won two games, so this is the decider. Hans looking good to take it. We're going to see an X marks on balls already. I don't think he realized that he mantas. In fact, mantas out of it. Didn't know that was possible, but there you go. Kirei taking so much Kirei. damage. Look at that. That's a BKB Shiva's Guard Death Prophet. Dropped to basically two thirds health from two illusions and a couple of right clicks from Luna. And Slicks and Guani just getting taken down. We have Endless Winter getting gone on. He's in the cogs. A big boat coming through, but he instantly cheeses up. Leaves him alive just long enough, but he's starting to go down now. Balls just taking down Kerry with the right clicks, but Slick's doing his own job. Balls still has that Aegis available, and they're just taking this Rax down. Slick's trying to get something going here, but he's still alive. He knows he has to attack everyone but Balls. And Balls picking up a kill on the Lich without even being in the fight. Now Slick's getting blinked and taken down. The Aegis gets popped, so Luna is going to be at full health. Godot going down as well. This is looking like it's going to be game over for CSW. It's a secondary Rax. Slick's bought back, and he's already at half health. The BKB not available for him for another 15 seconds. And how do they fight into this? Yeah, and this is going to be the third Rax going down, most likely. They've really got to try and force him out of this base. We're going to have a boat coming in. The X marks will not break it this time. Ball's in a bit of trouble. Guani coming through with the right click. Slicks BKB, but he's already been hit by the Poison Nova, and it doesn't purge it. Sorry, the, uh, the Gale, and it doesn't purge that slow. Firestarter coming in, Guani going down, the blink was used however, so it won't be ready for another 7 seconds. That tower right for the picking, 95 damage to go, Balls taking it down in one full swoop. This is going to be the final racks for Hans, the pipe goes up, and look at the Glaives just bouncing through, doing so much damage. Kure already at half health, Slicks are at like 2 thirds health, and that's Mega Creeps for Hans Reborn. Yeah, and how does CSW fight this out, I mean... Mega creeps are so hard to fight against, and you just can't do anything. Godot hooking in, BK being an instantly running balls is just coming through. He doesn't have the Aegis this time, but in come the Mantis style illusion damages. Shatan going on a mega kill streak. Balls just too strong, and the good game gets called. <laughs> Muffin Man angry about the glaze, but there we have it. Hans take out Tides Rats season three, three games to two against Kansei with excellent games. I've been the Spectre, joining me was Daredevil Dan, 
And a big thank you from all of the casters as well as Southern Cross Dota and thank you to our sponsors TT Esports. Hans Reborn taking out Season 3. Yeah, congratulations to Hans Reborn. CSW putting up a fight there. Definitely felt like uh, they could come back into this. Obviously winning the third game. Had the one game advantage and they even knocked down Hans into the lower bracket themselves. So Hans Reborn fighting back strong, getting back into it. Uh, thanks to everyone for tuning in. Uh, on the stream and in game hope you had a blast congratulations to those who won the uh, items as well uh, you can follow Spectre on Twitter at Spectre and myself at Daredevil Dota thanks to uh, Woodsy for buying me pizza too you're awesome and I love you so yes thank you very much um, I'm just gonna smack all of my links in the chat now so be sure to go to all of them and follow and subscribe and all of that kind of stuff so thank you very much for tuning in I've been the Spectre, joining me was Daredevil Dan, and this has been Tides Wrath Season 3. And uh, we'll, we'll try and uh, we'll go to a quick break and I'll try and see if we can get uh, anyone from Hans to have a few words.